What's good? I'm back again with another video and today I'm going to share my updated spring summer skincare routine and makeup for oily skin. Thank you Glossier for sponsoring this video and let's get started. All right, so we're going to start with the skincare routine and I'm going to start by cleansing my skin. So this is the Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser. This is one of my favorite cleansers. I've talked about this product on my channel since like I started it, like since 2016. It is such a good like hydrating cleanser and it's great because it is low pH so it won't strip your skin. It's really important to use a cleanser that has a low pH because our facial skin is naturally a little acidic. And if it gets too high, if the pH of our skin gets too high, it will damage our skin barrier. And that's where problems happen. And also the cool thing with this cleanser is that um, when I use it at night, I actually use it dry. So I don't put it on wet skin and I don't wet my hands. I actually uh, pump it into my dry hand and then I will, um, massage it all over my face and it's going to remove makeup. And then what I do is I use it to double cleanse. So I go in again, this time with water and that actually cleanses the skin. So you guys know that I'm a huge advocate for the double cleanse because you need to like remove impurities and makeup before you actually cleanse your skin. Um, and then you cleanse it again to actually cleanse the skin. Sometimes I use different products for that, like a cleansing balm and then a low pH cleanser, like a water-based cleanser. Um, but what I like about the Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser is that you get two products in one because it removes makeup and it cleanses your skin. And I'm gonna wash it off with water. <laughs> oh, this was open the whole time. <laughs> Okay, so a, a tip for people who have acne prone skin, um, get a towel specifically for your face. Don't use your hand towel or your bath towel to dab your face dry because bacteria grows on towels and you don't want like hand bacteria and like body bacteria to also go on your face. And after you wash your skin with Milky Jelly Cleanser, it should not feel tight and dry because that's not how your skin is supposed to feel after you wash your face. If you wash your face with a regular cleanser, like it's not low pH or anything, um, and your skin feels tight and dry, you need to stop using it immediately because that is compromising your skin barrier and it's probably creating a lot of problems. It's probably creating dryness or excessive oiliness and things like that. You really want a nice hydrating low pH cleanser like the Milky Jelly Cleanser. So I really, really like this one and it served me so well for so many years and it's one of my holy grail um, skincare products. So that's the Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with the Great Barrier Relief by Crave Beauty. This is a great serum if you have a damaged skin barrier and this is going to kind of like bring your skin back to life. It's gonna like nurse it back to health, that's that. And then I'm going to go in with the moisturizer. This is the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide Cream. And I like this moisturizer because this is a really great moisturizer for people who have combination skin because it's not as heavy as their other moisturizer that they have. That one's really thick and really creamy. This one is more of like a gel-like consistency, so it goes on really smooth and really light, so it's perfect for your, like your T-zone or places that get oily, but it's hydrating enough and moisturizing enough to take care of those dry patches as well. And then I'm just gonna apply an eye cream real quick. Just because under my eyes are feeling especially dry today for some reason. It's very important to be really delicate around your eye area because the skin underneath your eye is very sensitive and very thin. So you don't want to like rub in an eye cream. You kind of just like want to lightly pat it. And then the last step, you do not want to skip. You want to make sure you're applying SPF. Gotta make sure that my skin doesn't get damaged from all that UV exposure. So even when you're like driving in a car, you still get UV exposure. So whether you're like riding the bus or driving a car, or taking the train or whatever, if you're gonna be outside and you're getting any type of UV or sun exposure, gotta wear SPF. Okay, so now that we've got that under control, let's go do some makeup. 
Okay, so I air dried my hair a little bit, but it's not completely styled, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a primer, and if you have oily skin, you know exactly why this step is necessary. <laughs> is because, for one, if you have like large or visible pores, which people with oily skin normally tend to have, um, a primer is going to fill in those pores, essentially, and kind of create like a smoother base for your foundation to go on top. And also, depending on the type of primer you use, um, a primer can also help control oil a little bit. So for oily skin folks, make sure you get like an oil control primer. And this one is a mineral primer, so that's why it looks like it's giving me a white cast. But since I'm putting foundation on top of that, I don't really care about the white cast because you're not gonna see it after I apply foundation. So now I'm gonna apply foundation, and this is the Hourglass Immaculate Liquid Powder Foundation, and I love this foundation for oily skin because it starts off as a liquid, and then once you buff it into the skin, it turns into a powder, and it controls oil very, very well. I wouldn't recommend this if you have combination skin just because um, it clings onto dry patches, but if you have like true oily skin, like I usually do most of the time, um, this is a great foundation because it just controls oil so well. So what I do, you have to work really quickly with this because it does turn into a powder. So what I do is I put a little bit on the back of my hand and then I like dab it onto the skin like that. And then I start blending it in. So as you can see, um, my skin is completely matte, which is what I like for my oily skin during like the spring and summer months because I tend to like get oily very, very easily during these months and I just like to keep it matte. So the next thing I'm gonna do is apply concealer under my eyes because I have a little bit of darkness under there and I wanna brighten it up. So I'm using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and I'm just gonna go over the areas that are a little dark. Oh, one tip that I have for oily skin is if you're gonna use a matte foundation, make sure that you use a really like emollient moisturizer because you don't wanna put like a gel, like a matte gel moisturizer and then put a matte foundation on top because you're gonna make your face look really cakey even though your skin gets oily. It's gonna look like an oily cakey mess, you know what I'm saying? So use like a really emollient moisturizer or a really like sticky um, makeup primer if you're gonna use a matte foundation. So like either use a matte moisturizer and like a natural finish foundation or use a really emollient moisturizer and then use a matte foundation. You shouldn't use like matte both or else they're gonna like, I don't know, it just doesn't stack on top of each other very well. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is eyebrows. Now this is the Glossier Boy Brow. This is one of my favorite products by Glossier. And I like this because it's more of a, it has like more of a pomade consistency, whereas a lot of brow gels are like gels, so they start to flake and they make your eye, your eyebrows look ashy. What I like about the boy brow is that it's not really a gel, it's more of like a pomade, so it doesn't flake like uh, a gel does. And usually I use the color black, but I got brown this time, and I think I like the way that this one looks more than the black one. I just think it looks more natural and it's a lot easier to control than the black one is. I always just assumed that because my hair is black and because I'm black, <laughs> I needed to get black for it to show up well. Um, but I found since I got brown this time, it actually just looks really, really natural. And I actually prefer brown over black these days. So I filled them in and then to get even more precision, I'm gonna go in with a brow pencil. Now I'm gonna let this dry a little bit because if I go directly in with a brow pencil, it's gonna like move the pomade and that's not what I want. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna let it dry real quick. It looks so pale on camera, that is very jarring. So I always start at the tail first because I want to get the shape and the precision in the tail first and then I go very, very light-handed um, at the front. And what I do is I trace 
the bottom first like that like that and then I start drawing very light strokes at the front Tapos, after that, I'm going to take a bronzer and then I'm actually going to put this in my crease. I'm going to like feather this into my crease. And this is just going to add dimension to my eyes. And then I'm going to go in with an eyeliner. So if you're a viewer of my channel, you know that I love doing like a little baby wing with a liquid eyeliner. But um, today I don't really feel like doing that. I feel like I don't know, I just feel like really natural makeup look today. So I'm just gonna use a gel liner and I'm using like a brown one because I want it to look still very natural. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do to my eyes is mascara. So this is the Glossier Lash Slick and this is a really fun mascara. It's actually a fiber lash mascara. It lengthens them because of the fiber. Like it kind of like attaches to your eyelashes like little lash extensions almost, but it also makes my eyelashes look fuller and like feathery, which I love. That's like my favorite look for eyelashes. We get up closer so you can see. So I go root to tip, and then once I coat all of my lashes, I like, I call this like dusting, like I lightly dust the tips of my lashes so that I can uh, get some more fibers in there and lengthen my lashes a little bit more. It just lengthens and defines and uh, volumizes and we love that. Another thing that I like about this mascara is that it is water resistant. So I don't know if anyone else has that problem. I'm sure someone watching this does have this problem, but um, when it gets a little bit hotter in the year, I actually like start sweating around my eyes, like my eyebrows, like around my hairline, and then it just like gets down to my eye area. And what happens is that if I'm not using like a waterproof or a water resistant mascara, the wet or whatever like gets on my mascara and then just like completely breaks it down and then I have panda eyes for the rest of the day so I like that um, the Glossier Lash Slick is water resistant to prevent that from happening. Okay and then the next thing that I'm going to apply is the Glossier Cloud Paint. Another one of my Glossier favorites. I've been talking about this for years as well and I actually have a new like application tip for you guys. So before I used to just apply it with my fingers, which I still do sometimes because it's just like very convenient just to do that. But if you want to like feather it out and make it look even more natural, what I'm doing is I'm taking like this round, this is actually a foundation brush, but I really like it because it diffuses liquid products really well because it's foundation brush. Um, the thing with my foundation is it's a liquid powder foundation. So it turns into a powder, like it's literally a powder right now. Even if you use a regular foundation, if you still put powder on top of your face, it gets a little difficult to apply liquid based uh, products on top of it. It becomes hard to blend because the water based product kind of like interacts with the powder on your face. So one tip that I found that helps is to use a foundation brush to apply liquid blushes like the cloud paint. So that it doesn't ruin the foundation under, it just adds color and diffuses it really, really well. The cloud paints are buildable, so you don't have to put everything on at the same time. You can build the color up if you need to add more. Just see how pretty that is? Pretty and natural. Oh, this is in the color uh, Storm, which I really love. It's like a really nice, kind of like ras deep raspberry color. It's a very nice color for those who have like brown or like tan skin. My battery's about to die, so let me switch out the battery. <laughs> so one thing that I really like about the cloud paint is that it's water-based, and this one actually like stains the skin, whereas if you use like a cream blush, cream blushes just like sit on top of the skin, which is not great for oily skin in the spring and summer, because if you get oily, it's just gonna like, you can just wipe it off because it literally just sits on the skin. And if you use like a powder blush, 
Um, once your skin starts getting oily, you could also just like wipe it off and it'll be gone. So what I like about the cloud paint is that it's uh, water-based. So once you apply it to the skin, it stains the skin and it just stays there for a very, very long time. All right, and the next thing that I'm going to apply is the Glossier Generation G in the, uh, the name. <laughs> in the color Crush. Again, this is another product that I've talked about many, many times before. These actually got a new formula. These have been reformul reformulated. <laughs> Had to think of the word. The other Glossier Generation G, I still really love that product. Um, it's just that that one was very matte. Like it was very almost chalky. I mean, I still liked it, but it, if your lips were dry, you could see it. You know what I'm saying? So with this new formula, it's a lot more buttery than the previous formula. Um, so it's it just applies better in my opinion. So I'm just gonna apply that. I love the way like blotted lips look. So what I love about the Generation G is that it gives you that blotted look already without having to blot. <laughs> And yeah, that was my updated um, skincare routine and makeup routine for oily skin. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you so much Glossier for sponsoring this video. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.